Hey guys, Jamie here at One Piece at a Time. So in today's video, we are progressing through our custom home build. Um, and in this video, we are accomplishing um, the rest of the roof trusses and rafters. We're doing the roof decking. We um, got the siding on, which we used popular wood siding. And we did the windows. We installed the windows and the doors. So today's video will encompass all of that. And I'm trying to get us all caught up to current. Um, with all of our projects but enjoy this video and if you're new thank you for checking out our video and our channel one piece at a time and please consider subscribing and following along with our progress thanks modeled after a uh, grain factory um, taken from a model train HO train tool uh, train set look at down in here you can see down into the atrium
want you to look down the length of this board. Now, if you look down the length and you're very careful to aim right down this edge, you will see just a slight crown. See that? So that's what we're going to put to the outside. I'm just going to go ahead and slide it off. Ryder's going to step up here and help me out and get ready to go with his impact driver. Now, one thing I always like to do is I set the bottom into place. I just kind of get it started and close to where it's going. And then I'm going to slide this over, up, and into place. And then you take your hammer and just kind of tap right between your screws there. I like to put my toe up against it so it doesn't bounce back or out. going to leave it slightly skewed so that as Ryder drives the screw, it's going to drive it over and flush to the opening. Well, good Lord willing, it doesn't always work that way, but that's the intention of our work. Make sure I'm flushed up otherwise. Okay, Ryder, go ahead and run this screw first right there. Yeah. Stop, wait, now let's check it. Are we flush? Almost, so let me see if I can tap it a little more. Move your foot so I don't hit you. There you go, okay. Now, once we have a screw established, he can go ahead and put the other one in. Real good, okay, now since it's a four by six, we're gonna to try to put a minimum of four screws into the bottom, so right, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that up. And when he's done, that's it. Go ahead and flush up this door jam. And I'll go over with you guys in a minute, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to try to just go ahead and flush this up. Let's see here. So. First of all, I put our screw down below. That's all neatly flushed up. Now we're trying to do this upper part and we're almost there. It's almost to perfection. We'll get it in just a minute. I'm using two flat bars down here and I'm gonna go up just a shiv to, uh, to make sure that we are as flush as we can be up here on the top. And we're not quite there yet, but we will be in just a couple more moments. It takes a little patience to do all this. And let's see if that works. Oh, went too far. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Ryder, I think you're holding on just a little too tight, son. Relax a little bit. And uh, you just want to keep it from falling out of the jam, that's all. Okay, we're very close. And because we're very close, works for us. So I'm going to go ahead and put this last screw here in the jam. Okay, now that's sucked up tight. I'll double check it for flush. Looks beautiful. Top and bottom. So we're going to go around the corner here. And uh, now you can move like the other router. I'm going to take and pull two screws out. That one's coming out. I'm going to save it. And that one. Okay, they're the ones that are closest to the center of the jam. I'm going to take and re-drill these two just to make sure we have a nice centered hole. And then I have these longer screws. And I'm going to take those and run them in through the hinges. And as soon as they touch, I'm done. I don't pull any harder, otherwise you break your screw. This is uh, not a bad door, but it's not the most expensive door. And so the hardware kits is where they save their money. And oftentimes, because they're saving money, they're using some pretty soft screws. Okay, here we are coming back to door setting. Ryder, come on over here and I'm going to have you hold the door shut for a second. 
One of the things I like to do indoors and people forget to do is I take and I look at the top edge of the dead bolt and the bottom edge. And um, also at this point, we can take and remove. I don't know why I didn't get more battery out today, but I didn't. You know, one thing about battery tools is all the pieces and parts to them. They are wonderful, but they can also be useful. Let's go ahead and take these screws out of here quickly. Set them down there, because you never know, you might need it for something. Can't tell you how many piles of parts I ended up with because I might need it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the top of the door handle here with my pencil. Very easy to clean off with a little bit of Windex, no big deal. I'm gonna go over. Now, Piper, if you come over to this side, if you just take a look, you'll see here is the top of my deadbolt, bottom of my deadbolt, top of my strike plate for the door handle, bottom. Now then the question, now stand over here so you can look directly, is do these line up? And if they do, you're in pretty good shape. If they don't, that means you have to shim the side of your door so that it either goes up or down to make these lines line up. And you don't always get all of them. And worst case, sometimes you can't go down far enough. Or sometimes you have to unscrew the hinge side of the door and lift it up to get this side to match. If you don't do that, then your dead bolts and your door handles will not fall into the strike correctly and you'll forever be fighting a door handle that drives you nuts. So, to that end, uh, that's why we do that. Now, the next step we do, so I'm gonna take and put in my shim stack here and I kinda already know where it needs to be. And I'm gonna shoot the center between the deadbolt and the door handle. So I'm going to call that my center line. I'm going to put a C right there. It wasn't exactly center, but that's as good as I need to do for now. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'll shim halfway between there and here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to eyeball that. I'm going to take and ooh, that one's not going to go in very good. Let's see. Spread them out a little bit. And I'm always keeping in mind, is this gap the same all the way down and all the way up? And if it's not, then what do I have to do to correct that? So Take this long drill bit. Now we're doing siding, it's on the back side of the house, it's up high. Anything within an eighth of an inch is going to be good enough for what it is we're trying to do here. Okay, it's, uh, it's within the cockable range. So I'm going to come out with my drill bit about the bit length of a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and drill some of this out. You can really spend a lot of time on this, but when you're trying to do production, like I said, as long as you're within an eighth of an inch. Now we'll take and drill sideways and just lift the drill up. See how the drill's actually cutting the curve for us? And I'll come over here. That's a quick way to save a whole bunch of time with a chisel. You see these these uh, long drill bits are pretty flexible. You can kind of hold on to them if you need to. I'll hold this down with my knee. I just kind of work it back and forth. You hear my glove.
Okay, now I'll take this middle piece and I can just go ahead and break it out. There it is. So the alternative, you're saving time by using that drill. The alternative would have been to chisel it out. Yeah, you could spend a lot of time with a chisel. I'll just take and finish the cut out with my uh, utility knife here. Take the, deep, the burrs off. And I'll flip it over so I can reach the other side. Trim off the burrs again. If you know anything about shoeing horses, you'll see that a lot of these techniques are used in shoeing horses. Okay, now that is good enough. You can see where I did the overcut on the back side. But if you flip it over, see there you can't even see the cut. This is going to be a great piece for the top right in the center and that's it. Okay, second story, almost in the dark here, trying to get these last few boards on. We're going Alaska style on this. <laughs> right over the top down there on that one here. Try to tap it in. Is this corner right here. Hold on one second. We're gonna turn the tape. Okay, watch yourself and bring me this up. Hi, may do may do do's. Yep. Big wood chip floating in my yard. I came up to offload some of this wood from the, the job site, and our kitties, for whatever reason, they have an affinity for this old beat up golf cart. And as soon as I parked, they came running over to me, and uh, Sugar here, she uh, decided to jump in the cart. They like to sleep on it. So I have I have a little instructor that came to visit me today. This morning I am cutting blogs. 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 You need lots of blogs in your house. I'm trying to cut siding. And the best fit is the scribe fit. So checking all of our measurements. Watch this little trick right here. See how you can take a pencil, put it on your finger. And just slide it like that see there 
gives a nice simple little trim there. But then I also need my link. So I'll set it up here. I give myself a little mark so I've already got a point of reference. So Brian and Ryder are putting the batting on. See this is the the south side of the house. Two story, the master there over the garage. They're finishing up the batting and he's got his um they're not farm jacks what are those brian yeah th those aren't farm jacks what is your pump jacks, pump jacks. Pump he used jacks. pump jacks i'll zoom in a little bit okay. um, um with that's an old u-haul um the ramp that you slide out to load and unload a moving van or a u-haul um that's what that is and he's using that as their plank um their scaffolding i guess you could say let me step over here to the side maybe you could see a little bit more up close the pump jack that he said he's using that raises and lowers Puts them where he needs to as far as work goes. And then that's attached to the roof. 